is to learn the value of training and education. Now, I've covered that for a while. I hope that a number of principles have come across you, a number of practices, and that you'll be able to pick up one or two things that you can go and implement and use and concepts that you can keep in mind which will change how your business runs. Uh, and if it does that, I'll be more than pleased. Now, we're going to have a break um, for, for half an hour. We're going to come back at 4.30. On behalf of MCC, and also end to end, I'm representing the diversified promotion service member HUD. My name is John Bergwassen. I'm the managing director. Uh, and we are fortunate enough to bring up uh, Professor David Rennan. I read his book four years ago, and we made the initiative to invite him to come to Malaysia. And fortunately, uh, he has never visited Malaysia. Maybe there's a reason why he has decided to come to Malaysia and explore the, the beauty of Malaysia and, and the people. Uh, we had a very good uh, meeting. Uh, there's a lot of talking points, a lot of uh, future plans that we want to do. So I believe your presence today will give you more uh, encouragement and excitement to come back again to Malaysia, maybe with his wife and children and grandchildren. So, uh, not to waste any time, we have, I think, hopefully by 4.30, we have the session heats up and we want to reduce the time for the tea break, then we may go on and we must leave the show by 5, I think. So, let's start uh, the process. So, uh, I would like to just briefly explain, for those who of you have prepared some questions, please quickly now go to the mic before someone else, someone else go there. Not necessary in my view. 
Uh, one of the countries that I think you have in this country is called Tesco. I think you have Tesco here, do you? And that's uh, run by a fellow called Terry Leafy. And Terry is not inspirational at all. Uh, don't expect a great song and dance from Terry on, on the platform because you're not going to get it. Uh, but Terry has taken uh, Tesco from a pilot high sort of cheap company uh, to one uh, which was third in the grocery market in the UK, now to being first by something like uh, 8% over his nearest rival, and that's in the period of six years, and is now going abroad. He is the most admired company in Britain at the moment, and Terry is not inspirational at all, but he does know where he's going. He is taking the company to levels of performance where they've never been before. And do I think we would get there without it? No, I don't. So yes, I think leadership is important, but I also think that you need processes and techniques uh, and methods of helping the whole business to get there. I don't think one person can do it necessarily. But he set a goal, which is we are going to be as big in non-food as we are in food. And that's what's helped Terry and the business get to be big. But they're still marvelous in quality, they're still marvelous in customer service, and they're good on the initiatives and innovation. But yes, I think leadership is important. Do I think informational leadership is necessarily as important? No, I don't. And do I think that techniques and processes are equally important in helping even good leaders bring the whole company forward? Yes, I think they help as well. Now you asked the second question, I can't remember what attitude. Oh, attitude, yes. Um, I think it's very easy, certainly in government departments that we've worked with, to condemn they have a negative attitude and that's why it's not working. The question I always ask is, how can you change a negative attitude? And that's quite hard. Now, one of the things we tend to do is we use surveys to indicate how negative is the attitude. And then we work on what would change the attitude and how do we get people positively involved in helping us move the organization forward. And we find that attitudes change when people get listened to and we actually implement some of the things they suggest. I think it's not easy changing attitudes in companies. But if you change, if you start to change habits uh, into positive ones, I find that attitudes will move along with it. But people's attitudes tend to change when they're beginning to win. So I like to dream up events where it appears we are succeeding here. We didn't succeed the last time, but we managed to succeed now. And if we have little successes, we build on little successes until the attitudes become positive. But I do agree, changing negative attitudes, which have been there for 20 years, is hard work. Very hard work. And if you have an inspirational leader there, that also helps. But do I think it's necessary for the company? Not really. But I do think leadership takes money where you want to go, and pursuing that with some focus is very valuable in taking a company to a world-class standard performance.